Hey fishers, we're out here on the lake fishing today. I've already caught one in a live well right now. I got one. All right. And I want to talk about my fishing, my fishing rods, my arsenal. And I'm going to try and do this video without poking myself with the hook, which I've done twice now. So this is take number three. And recently I found it, ah, there's still hooks on these things. Anyways, um, I think in the last video or one of the last two videos or something, we were out on a pier catching a bunch of ladyfish. And I don't know how much of that came out in the video because it was nighttime and it was really dark, but we were catching a ton of ladyfish and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was the most intense fishing I've ever done in my life. Uh, it was really cool. Some kid is walking up on the pier and he sees me catching all these ladyfish and he thinks that I'm some kind of fishing hero or something. And I've never, ever, just never experienced anything like that before. So he, he looks at me and says, Sir, what kind of fishing reels do you use? Expecting some kind of great answer. I wish I had a great answer to tell him, but I kind of looked at him and I was like, um, I, use, I use Walmart reels, and he just kind of looked at me like he was just completely disappointed. And, um, but I kept a straight face, like I was dead serious. Yeah, I use Walmart reels, and I use Walmart rods also. Um, and it's actually kind of true, because this thing right here, Shakespeare Durango, and I still have the rod that it came with, uh, this is knit, but I got it in 1990, 1991, something like that, 1992, somewhere in that ballpark at Walmart. Um, and, um, you know, I imagine it's truly a piece of junk, but I, I've been using it and it's lasted all of this time. And because it's lasted, I went ahead and bought, I tried to do this this time without stabbing myself with the hook. I went and found an, the same thing on Amazon, it's blue now, and bought another one. Then I got these rods at Academy for like 10 bucks. So there's less than $50 in my hand right now. And this raises the question to me. It, it raises the question, because we're starting to do all this fishing stuff. Why would somebody spend a lot of money on a fishing rod? So I started spending a little bit more. I know there's guys out there that spend $500. I'm not going to spend $500, but I, I went up in price and I bought this um, Akuna and an Ugly Stick. And just curious, what is going to be the difference between this and that? Um, and I noticed there's a lot of difference. It's much more smoother. It's much more sensitive. I can feel things on the bottom that I never knew was there and you know probably one of the reasons why I've stuck at fishing for so long is I've been using this for so long that I didn't know what it felt like to have a bite or a nibble or whatever but um so this kind of turned me on to looking at higher priced equipment and um you know we'll see where that leads you know like I said I'm not going to buy five, a 500 dollar rod but I did go and buy this thing um Abu Garcia, Black Max, um, Baitcaster. And I absolutely do not know how to use this thing. And it's pretty funny to watch me use it. So you probably, we probably don't have any videos of me using this. And it probably won't be for a while. But I'm working on it and hopefully I'll get fluent with it. But anyways, so the quality of these is obviously much better than those. And it's, it has improved what we're, what we're able to pull into the boat. So I was thinking about this, I was thinking about the quality of the, of the instruments. I started thinking about our lives as men. Um, you know, we do this all the time. You know, we can't just go and buy a guitar. We can't go buy like the $300 Ibanez. We gotta go buy a $1,200 American Strat. You can't even get the, the $600 Mexican Strat, which is, is exactly the same, exactly the same instrument, just made in Mexico. We've got to get the $1,200 or $1,500 American Strat 
just because it says American on it. And the cameras, we do the same thing with cameras. We can't just get something that'll work. We've got to get something that makes us look like we are a professional photogra photographer for the New York Times. Man, I just turned the thing on. How do you turn? On mine is you hit. The There's just something in us where we want to have the best stuff. So where am I going with this? Um, this is where I'm going. It's easy for us to see in the world how it is important for us to have a quality fishing rod. And, and obviously they get a lot better than this. Um, it is easy for us to see in the world that we need a quality car. We need a quality, you know, um, camera, whatever. You, you can think of all the examples that we spend our money on. Um, it's easy to see that. However, do we ever stop and think about the quality of our, um, our heart and our mind? A couple of weeks ago we talked about self-control and, and um, overeating and all of, that, um, all of that stuff. Now I want to take it to the next level and I want to talk about purity. I want to talk about the quality of the thoughts that we have in our mind. And we spend all of our time watching television, watching violent television, watching, you know, um, you know, things that just aren't, um, you know, the most chaste television programs, um, the things we look at online, the pictures we look at online, even, you know, the guys out there on the, on the fishing pier, man, they couldn't complete a sentence without cussing at each other. It was just, you know, it was, I mean, there's something interesting about the way they did it, but, but still, the quality of our mind, the quality of our heart, the quality of our soul, if we think that there's a value in paying, you know, what was this? This was like 70 bucks or something like that, and this thing was 25 bucks. So if we think that there's value in spending three times as much for some material item, then why don't we think that there's, there's a value in having um, a pure heart, a pure mind, a pure soul? Think, reflect on what you're watching, what you're doing, what, how you're spending time on the internet, um, you know, the way, the attitude that you have when you see an attractive woman. Um, spend some time reflecting on that because at the end of the day, you know, if, if, if you're going to use a quality instrument to catch a fish, shouldn't you have a pure soul to catch God? If your soul is filled with so much gunk, so much garbage, so much impurity, that it, it causes uh, a hindrance, a blockage, are you truly going to be able to, to, to see, to hear, to feel God? Uh, you know, there's no telling how many fish, um, you know, this one I got back in the 90s, there's no telling how many fish came and went just nibbling on that line that I never pulled in and never knew they were there because the quality of this instrument wasn't quite right. Now I'm starting to learn the necessity of that. The same thing holds true for our souls. Fishers, I'm challenging you to work on purity, to um, spend time reflecting on what you watch, what you listen to, uh, the video games. Spend some time in reflection on that. And, um, you know, I guess, um, you know, see where that takes you, see where that leads your relationship with God. Um, God bless you. We'll have some uh, new videos uh, coming up here uh, in a couple weeks. We'll see you guys later. We are fishers of men. We are challenging men to grow in holiness through spiritual formation, service, prayer, and brotherhood. The world needs good men with good hearts to lead the world back to holiness. God is calling you to be that man. Men, we are challenging you. Change your heart. Change the world. Be a fisher of men.